Yeah. Uh, du equal py. If, for instance, those didn't equal each other, would we have to do a derivative of z with respect to u, and then a derivative of u with respect to y, and then a derivative of y with respect to t? Yeah, we're not going to get into that. That involves. Okay. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Um, I think Marceline might be right. Let's try it. You could graph this if we knew what y of 0 was. But I think if we clean it up a little bit, it might be easier to see what it is. Like if we just take this fraction, and we multiply both top and bottom by 2 times y of 0 minus 1. So in the numerator, let's just try this for a moment. And we get 2 times y of 0 minus 1. In the denominator, though, so this 1 half is going to be y of 0 minus 1. And then when I multiply by through here, this is going to pick up a y of 0 minus 1. This is going to become 2 e to the minus 2t. Let's see what happens. So 2 times y of 0 minus 1 over over oh, okay. Minus 2t. I have a 2 minus 1. That's not so bad. That's 1 minus 1 is 0. Uh, 2 minus uh, plus, sorry, it's plus. That's 3. Minus the initial condition. And then plus, and we'll use that. Y of 0. Between 1 and 3, what would be a value between 1 and 3? 2, 2. For example, yeah, 2 is an obvious one, sure. If I started at 2, let's see what this problem would be. So this becomes a 3 minus 2. So let's say, let's try. Let's let y of 0 be 2. So if I did that, let's make some changes here. Um, yeah, I hope the word is full. Yeah. I'm going to write all over it. I hope that this doesn't change. Uh, this, 3 minus 2, this is a 1. This here, if you said 2, this is going to become a 1. And then if this is a 2, this whole piece here, this becomes a 1. So let's see. What happens when time is zero? When time is zero, this becomes a one. So I'm at one plus one, two, which is two. Two over two, that's one plus one more is two. Did it work? Yeah. Our starting condition worked. Okay, so we got lucky. 
let's see. Let's see what happens though as time increases. Because as time increases, what's happening to this term here? Let's see, so as t increases, now, now just a minute. We know the answer. We already figured it out. If you're between one and three, what sh what do we expect our fish population to do? Three. It increased to three, and that would be its steady state. Let's see if that worked. So as t goes to infinity, what happens to this term? This term becomes zero, so zero times zero. So in our denominator, what we're left with is we're left with, or our, our whole number becomes, let's see, y steady, that can become a two over, this whole piece becomes a zero. This piece is already a one. That's two over one. If you add one more to it, you get three. Look at that. So it does. It goes to four. <coughs> Isn't that the slickest thing? I actually can't believe we didn't make a mistake along the way. Did we? All right, let's do this. Um, okay, I'm having a little bit of a reservation because I really wanted to. I didn't know how much time this would take today. So, on uh, our next class on Monday, we're going to talk about section 1.8. I hate to push the test. Would you guys rather do the test the following Wednesday? Or do you want to yeah, yeah. I don't know. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.